Hey everyone, I'm just going to take you through a little bit of Lab 4 on the Smart Sparrow uh, website. So um, this is a classic combustion analysis uh, setup. So you see down here you've got your um, oxygen and uh, some other gas here. It's probably uh, propane or something. So you, this is the burner here and the oxygen is going to be pumped through this combustion chamber and in this case you have um, the phosphorus pentoxide and the sodium hydroxide and they're going to pick up uh, different components that we'll read about here and so um, the background is here I'll let you go over that and see you're basically seeing which how much of it is uh, co2 and water and um, I'll let you go over that I'm going to show you some of the mechanics but not the whole thing so this case it describes the background of you so this is a phosphorus pentoxide and um, it, it's a drying agent and um, so the sodium hydroxide picks up the CO2. And this it, it tells you about how these empirical formulas work. Now empirical formulas are the lowest uh, you know, common denominator version of the formula. And so this one is to help you reinforce that. It says acetic acid has the molecular formula of C2H4O2, but the empirical formula is uh, just this. These are all, all divided by the lowest, the smallest one, which is two. It's gonna be that one, I think. And then we'll, and then we see, hey, yep, we did a good job. So um, this also might be tricky because they teach you how to do some of this math here. And it says, oh, you got to go from moles of H um, of water. And then you go, uh, you have to convert it to grams. And then you say there's two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of water. And then you get this many uh, relative moles out instead of the absolute. So this first one's this absolute value here. And you're going to try to convert that as sort of a, relative amount so and i'll show you how to do this this math is a little weird because especially down here they say one mole of h2o and here they just say moles um they get this from the periodic table so 18.02 is the 16 for oxygen plus the two h's for hydrogen and it um so in that particular case i'll try to get them both on the screen here at the same time so you can follow along um how, how does that look oh i'll try to put it like uh how should i try to scoot this over here for you um so let's try to get these both on here at once. So what that looks like is when you're doing this math, um, it says, oh, the absolute value of water. So you start with the water. In this case, you have, um, let me see if I get this straight here. Whoop, hello, little fella. All right, so you start with, a, um, in this case, it says one, hello, um, sorry, getting used to this tablet, one point uh nine zero two my handwriting is terrible especially on this tablet grams of water so here we go there's water and i'm gonna draw a little line under just to help me understand my math a little better uh you know this is terrible i'm gonna i apologize this is i can do better than this um so it's uh 1.902 oh, this is great uh 1.9 zero two grams of water okay that's better and then we say that this here tells you and the way that this is written they're, they're not, they just kind of left the little times out of here so that's not really useful to you so it's it's times and then the way that this is written is uh 18.02 grams of water 18.02 grams of water and they should really put grams of water to help you understand what this is is one mole of water and then the whole thing is times and this is the tricky part here one mole of water has two moles of hydrogen right so we're make sure that we cancel these things out so we have one mole of uh, water is two moles of hydrogen times and this is why it's relative it's relative to the amount of water um then we say that one uh and that's the answer actually we just need to get the moles of hydrogen so um so then we say we just erase this and then we'll put a little equal sign here and we want to know um, what the answer is so to make sure all, we're doing it the right way all these things have to cancel we have grams of water grams of water moles of water moles of water we're left with moles of hydrogen which is you know what we're what we're going for and if i do everything correctly i can do my math over here i say hey um 
chemistry calculator. All right, we got, um, then we say that we have uh, 1.902 uh, times two divided by 18.02 uh, equals, and we get 0.211. We have, uh, that's a count number, so we have four significant figures, so we have 0.2111, really. Um, so I'll put, uh, we have the answer here is uh, uh, 0 0.211 moles of, uh, you can't see that very clearly here, I'll just drop a box around that and scoot it down here. There you go, you have, uh, it's not terribly better. I'll turn it to red so you can see. So the answer to this case, we'll do it right over real quick just so you can see what I did in red. 1.902 grams of water times uh, one mole of water is uh, 18.02 grams of water, which is we got from the periodic table. That's the weight of two hydrogens and one oxygen times uh, one mole of H2O is two moles of hydrogen. That's how we do that. And the next one is very similar. Uh, it's the carbon, but this case is, oh, this case you got 3.095 uh, moles of CO2 and then I like to draw a little line under it, it helps me feel better and then you say that um, there's 44.01 grams uh, per one mole of CO2 I'm not gonna write the CO2 each time times uh, one mole of CO2 just has it's the same you just have one mole of carbon and that's how you that's how you do the math and the answer to this one's gonna be uh, 0 0.07. That, these are examples of what you guys are, are going to be doing uh, later. So um, that's that's the detail on that. That's as much as you need there. I'll give you a little bit of the mechanics of the um, of the process here. So um, oh, let's scoot this up a little bit from the bottom. Here, little fella. All right, we're going to go here, and then so. This one's just some more examples of some math here that you should work on. This is the ratios. They say, oh, you're going to divide everything by the smallest ratio. So these, these are your absolute values, and you divide them all by the littlest one. They should count pretty close to whole numbers. They won't be exactly, but they'll be pretty close to whole numbers. So they're saying, hey, um, one that we know for sure that in here was we can, we can test the system by this catechol here, and we're going to say, hey, let's burn this stuff with some oxygen. We should get just CO2 and water, which is basically every organic um, reaction is just burning into CO2 and water. So um, this goes through the process of understanding what's happening and I'll give you some of the mechanics and then you do the same thing for an unknown. Here's catechol, which is also called ortho because they're one over from each other. They'd be meta if one was here and they'd be para if they were opposite, but it's ortho 1,2-dihydroxybenzene. Um, that's the stuff. So um, so we're going to tear the balance. This is to, to tear it. And then you weigh the mass of the sodium hydroxide trap. These are, these little valves here are closed. So I'm going to just do, 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 I'm going to put the, get the initial mass of the, um, this guy here. Well, we got 34.18 my case. Okay. And then we'll go next. I'll put everything back. And then I'm going to do the phosphorus, uh, uh pentoxide. Here, close the door. Yeah, I'm gonna count it as already teared. And then um, put this guy in there. Okay, little joker, hold still. Gotcha, all right, see, you didn't feel a thing. All right, all right. So we got those initial masses, and then um, we're gonna weigh some catechol here. So we go to the supply cabinet. Uh, I'm gonna put a weight boat in here. There you go, fella. And gonna get a scupula. I'm gonna drop it on catechol, pick some up. Uh, I'm going to take over here and say, hey, whoop, they drop it on the blue part. Doop. And he, it says how much? Uh, five grams. One, two, whoa, it was a lot. Uh, I'm going to do just a little bits here to get pretty close to five so that I make my math work in the range that they're expecting. Come on, buddy. Dare I? Dare I? Nope, I won't do it. Okay, I'm going to put this up here. I'm going to close the... Uh, that guy there, I'm going to say weigh the amount of it, okay, and there we go, it's it's in the weighing dish, and now what's it say to do here? Oh, so we're going to open this guy up, this combustion chamber, it's kind of like a 
a heat, uh, like a furnace, tube furnace. And we put this stuff in here. Okay, little joker. There you go. Uh, I guess I'll recycle this and actually send it to waste. Um, and then you close the door. I guess we want to make sure we open all the valves because we don't want to have an explosion. So we open everything up. And the, the ga this gas is for the burner. This is the oxygen. I don't think we have to turn those on. There's that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight. Straight line all the way out. Then we start cooking. And we stop when all this stuff is burned. See, it's coming down a little bit there. Say do, 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 do. You get the idea. So it'll all be gone in a moment. It's possible I'll scrub this out of the final video if I'm not too lazy. And it's almost done. And this is for a known reagent. You'll have to do the same steps over for an unknown in a moment. I think it'll turn itself off when it's all done. So you know it's done. Yep, it did. So I'm going to close the things. We'll just assume that it cooled down so we can touch it and don't burn our fingers off because it's going to be super hot. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, tear this guy again and go um, mass of the sodium hydroxide trap. So we open this up and we put this on here and then we weigh it after. And we record the mass and then we put it back. And then we go to the next one, the phosphorus uh, pentoxide. Okay, little fella, record your mass, put you here. And then we just go through the math, just like we did in the example. So this one's, oh, no, actually we're gonna do a um, an unknown first. I'm not gonna take you through all that, but basically you have the initial and final masses, which you can just subtract. So in our case, we would take, um, you know, for like the, for the, uh, car the carbon dioxide, we would take the, um, let's see here, or we'll, we'll do the, um, yeah, we'll do carbon dioxide, which is the sodium hydroxide before and after. So we have, um, I can, you can't get all this on there at the same time, unfortunately. Um, we have the, 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 cat the catechol, massive catechol is five grams and the mass before and after of the um, sodium hydroxide was 42.3982. Uh, and then the trap is um, 34.1198. We just subtract those. So we just um, you just have to subtract the mass of the sodium hydroxide catechol. You subtract the mass of the trap from that. And then uh, that's it. Then that's, that's the difference. And then you go into the discussion and you go through the, you kind of follow the processes. And uh, that's, that's essentially how it goes. Uh, I don't want to belabor or anything, so I'm not going to go into this in too much more detail. But um, basically, after you get the difference in masses, you uh, solve those for the masses of the um, just the oxygen and the uh, carbon, and then from that you you add up the, the you get them three in a row, divide them by the smallest one that gives you the molar ratio, and you get the empirical formula. And that's that's how you do it. Uh, good luck. It's due this Friday night. I'm sorry I'm getting this to you too late. Uh, it was early. It was my first opportunity to do so. Uh, enjoy and good luck. Bye-bye.